All right, let us welcome back to the program a man whose name was mentioned many times in the build to UFC 263 this past Saturday. It was mentioned after UFC 263 as well because according to Dana White, no matter what happened on Saturday, the number one contender for the UFC welterweight title is one Colby Chaos Covington. He joins us right now on the show. Colby, how are you, man? I'm doing, I'm doing great, Mike. It's uh, good to talk to you again. It's been a great journey being able to talk to you and you know, coming from the bottom to the absolute top of the sport, you know, it's it's great and a pleasure to always talk business with you. Appreciate the kind words. There's, as always, a lot to discuss with you, sir. First off, we spoke a couple of days after Kamar Usman's knockout win over Jorge Mazadal. Dana White said that night that you would be next for Usman. He stated once more after Saturday's event that you're still next for Usman. So I guess right off the bat, where are we at in the negotiations for this highly anticipated rematch between you and Kamar Usman? Yeah, my, my side's finished, Mike. You know, my side's already pretty much signed, sealed, and delivered. They're just waiting on Marty, you know. Ever since, you know, he beat that fragile dude, Street Judas Mosfidal, he's been running, you know. But he just found out. There's no more, there's nowhere left to hide, Mike. And he's going to have to face me inside that octagon sooner than later. So, you know, as soon as Marty, you know, his bar, balls, you know, stop shrinking and he comes back to earth, you know, he can fight me again. But the thing is, he's off the grid. He's hiding right now. He's probably got his phone on airplane mode. He's denying all the UFC's calls, you know, so he doesn't want to sign the contract. He's just hoping some alien invasion happens where he can just pick some other lightweight washout to fight again. But now he knows there's nowhere else for him to go. It's me and him, round two. Too much controversy in the first fight, Mike. I don't care what anybody says. You know, you can't claim to be this champion. You can't claim to be this great and all-time great fighter if you don't prove the doubters wrong and prove the fans right, you know? You, you didn't win that fight fairly the first time, and here we go, round two. Usman Covington, round two. I can't wait for it to happen, and I, it's only up to him when it's going to happen. It might take a couple months. might take, who knows, maybe a year by the time he signs the contract, but it will happen. It, it's going to happen, and the UFC has reassured me of that. It's funny when people talk about this fight and, and trying to get it put it together, it's always, well, if they can come to terms with Colby, if the UFC and Colby can come to, to terms on this, how are you happy with the negotiations? Do you feel like the UFC is approaching you with this fight the way that you feel like you deserve? Yeah, definitely. The, the UFC, uh, is, has came at me right. And, uh, you know, the, it, you know, I'm happy with it, but this this is the opportunity that propels me to another level within sports and, and within the MMA world in general. So, you know, I'm looking forward to taking that opportunity and running with it and, and stealing the show and creating a spectacle for all the fans around the world. And, you know, this is going to lead to bigger and better fights in the future and, and, and my cut of the pay-per-view, which is what I want more than anything. Have there been any discussions in regards to when this fight might happen? Have we gotten that far yet? Oh, uh, you know, I, I know they were pushing for August, September originally. So that's what I'm hoping for, you know, at, at the latest, you know, I'm ready to go today. Me and Marty could fight tomorrow, but you know, the thing is, is he needs to get his new chemist to give him the, the proper shots, you know, to, to get all juiced up. And so he can fight me again. Cause that juice box knows he can't fight me, you know, fair and clean. He's got to be cheating to fight me, but it's not going to make a difference. Mike, he can do all the steroids, all the EPO in the world. Cause he is the CEO of EPO, but it doesn't matter. Marty Juiceman, I'm going to end his career and, and I'm going to break his soul. Do you feel like he was on something for that first fight? No question. I mean, if you look at the acne, I mean, he's almost a 40 year old guy, mid thirties. You got acne all over your face, all over your shoulders, all over your back. Come on, man. What, we're not in high school anymore. We didn't just hit puberty. You know, we're, we're grown adults. We're grown men. So it's just, that's too sketchy, Mike. And, and I've heard a lot of bad stories from some of the friends that he trained with in the past at black zillions, you know, and, and guys that went their own way. And they said kind of the same thing. They're like, he, he's definitely doing steroids. So we all know he doesn't move the needle in this sport. He's not a draw. So the only needle that Marty Juiceman moves is the needle he puts in his ass every day. You have talked about separating from ATT many times. We've had this conversation before, but you've also along the way separated from your management team. Colby Covington Incorporated is just one big sandwich thing under the same umbrella for not just the fighting, but for the <coughs> management side of things. So is that accurate? Like, are you, re are you sort of representing yourself in the fight negotiations as well? That's a hundred percent facts. And that's as accurate as it comes. I've been talking directly with Dana White and Hunter Campbell and, uh, 
you know, we've been getting the deals done on our own. So the thing is, is when you're in the UFC, you know, you, there's not really much managers can do for me, for you. So why pay this big percentage or any percentage to a manager that's not getting in the octagon? They're not helping you in your development, your career. If anything, you should give that fee and that percentage back to your coaches, the people that are investing every single day in you, the, the people that are giving you everything to help you develop and help you grow as an athlete. So, you know, I'd rather give that to my coaches and, and take extra care of the people that are around me every day. I'm not going to give it to these sleazeball, slimeball managers that just take a percentage and they don't do anything for you. There's no more sponsors in, in the sport. So, you know, I'm just working on my own. And, you know, talk about one of the sleaziest uh, managers in the game, Abdella Sleaze. I mean, you know, it, there's trouble in paradise, Mike. I don't know if you heard, but, uh, you know, I spotted uh, – Don't first off, let me say Ali – don't tell me I never did nothing for you because this is the first time you're ever going to hear about it. So, you know, now he's going to be panicking, calling Usman, what's going on? So, you know, Marty and, and Ali, they're having a little bit, they're button heads. I guess Ali promised Marty that he'd get him out of fighting me, but now Marty realizes he can't get out of fighting me. So he's entertaining and having uh, business meetings with other managers. He went and sat down last weekend with CAA and Swan, the Miami Design District, and he had dinner with them and talked business. So... You know, there's there's some trouble in paradise. Mike, him, uh, Marty, and Ali are, are at odds end. You got moles everywhere, Colby. Is that what you're telling me? People are, are hitting you up with this information. They're shooting you photos and everything. You got like some some solid evidence on you. Man, I'm a, I'm a powerful person, Mike. I mean, <laughs> not only am I, I'm Donald Trump's favorite fighter. And, and by the way, happy birthday to Donald Trump. You know, the greatest president of all time. Uh, a good friend of mine. A good family friend. And. Uh, you know, so, yeah, I know a lot of people, Mike, you know, I'm connected within law enforcement and and uh, Secret Service. They have my back. So much love to all our first responders, all our military, all all our law enforcement, the people that keep us safe and, and keep law and order every day. One speaking of Ali, one thing he said along the way is, you know, Colby doesn't deserve the title shot. Let's Usman wants to fight in June. Let's give the shot to Michael Chiesa. I'm curious how, how you react to that. I know we briefly texted back and forth, but because I asked you if you wanted to fight in June, you said you'll fight him tomorrow. But what did you think of them throwing Kiesa's name out there like that? I thought it looks funny, Mike. I, I mean, if the fans and everybody and all the media can't see what's going on, dude, Ali and Marty are squirming right now. They're so scared. They, they're they like shaking. They don't know what they can do. They're trying to get out of this fight at all costs. They're trying to find a way to maneuver out of fighting me again because they know they cheated the first time and they got lucky and they can't prove it and, and back it up again. So they're try it's just funny. They're trying to find any excuse not to fight. But, you know, I think this is what's killing his legacy. You know, he's not going to be an all-time great fighter because – you know, you didn't want to fight the next best guy, the number one guy in the world in the division. You didn't want to prove that you were actually the best, you know. Instead, you want to, you know, be a fake guy and make all these lies to the media that you never fulfilled. Look at what he was telling the media before the George fight. I want to fight two or three more times this year. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, well, what are we waiting for? Let's fight tomorrow. Let's fight in June. You wanted to fight another guy in our division in June, but you don't want to fight me in June? I mean... If the fans can't see that, you know, but I think they see that, you know, he beat two lightweight washouts in Dilbert and uh, Street Judas Masvidal. Now he thinks he's the shit. The media is hyping him up to be some pound for pound go, some some just unbeatable, you know, guy in there. So, you know, it's hilarious. After I break him, I, I wonder what the narrative is going to be then. You think Florida would be an appropriate place to hold this fight? I mean, obviously, the, the UFC and, and the state of Florida, the governor, they have a, a pretty tight relationship. They've they've helped each other out along the way. You both sort of have ties to the area. Is that what you're thinking? Like, if you had it your way, we do this in Florida? I mean, that, that'd be a dream come true, Mike. You know, to sleep in my own bed and, and be able to compete in the state that, you know, I, I live in now, and especially a state and a city that, that Marty comes to a lot. You know, he's been in Miami the last couple of weeks. I hear all these places he's been, you know, he's been at hard rock. He's been at Swan nightclub, having man, having meetings with managers, you know, he's been at live nightclub and fountain blue. So I get all, I get all these words of where he's been in my, my city. You know, this is my city. I'm Mr. 305. I run the 305. So I'm Miami's finest fighter. I'm the best fighter to ever come out of Florida. So it'd be an honor to fight here. And, you know, we have a, a stadium that's right next door, the bb &T Center. We have a good relationship with them. I know the UFC does. Uh, the, it's the, the the Florida Panthers. So, you know, the bb &T Center is where they, they play at. And we've done UFC fights there. So, 
you know, I think they have a good relationship with the UFC. And I've been talking to the vice president, uh, Sean Thornton, and we're trying to get the fight done there. It makes sense. You know, Marty used to train here. He comes here a lot. He probably still, you know, lives here half his time. So let's do it in Florida, you know, and we, the UFC and DeSantis have a good relationship and DeSantis has done a good job to let the UFC come back and be the first sporting event that has a full capacity and full crowd. So, you know, we owe DeSantis a couple of favors. He's a, a amazing governor, definitely the best governor in the United States right now. So let's get this title fight, the biggest fight of the year. Let's get it done. The 170 welterweight title, Marty Juiceman versus Colby Chaos Covington part two here in Florida. Has there been an official offer for this fight yet? Oh, uh, you know, yeah. I mean, there's been, I, I know the, I know, I know what I'm getting, you know, I know, I know what's coming to the table. You know, there's definitely been an offer and, and I've accepted it. It's just, it's really just up to Marty to, for when he accepts and when he's going to sign the contract. So of course he's going to use this fake, you know, narrative. Oh, I'm with my kid. Oh, I'm this, I'm that. But you know, he's just, He's just, you know, sitting, doing nothing, you know, just hoping that he can get another lightweight to fight. Because if you don't notice, his last two fights were lightweight washouts. They weren't real welterweights. So, you know, he's just hoping that, you know, something's going to appear out of thin air where he can fight, you know, somebody that's irrelevant to the division like a Diaz. He's begging to fight, you know, a lightweight jobber in Diaz who's not even ranked and relevant to the division anymore. It's just, it's pathetic, man. He's making a mockery of the division. He's making a, a mockery of everything the UFC stands for anytime, any place, anywhere. And, you know, I just can't wait to expose him sooner than later. He He's either getting exposed or, you know, he's just going to walk away and retire from the sport because he's a coward and didn't want to face me again. So you're going to get a cut of the pay-per-view? Is that, is that what you said earlier? Did I hear that right? No, you didn't hear that right, Mike. I said I would love for this opportunity to get this one, you know, and pass this opportunity, and then I'll be looking at pay-per-view. When you're a champion, that's when you get pay-per-view money. Right, okay. Well. Just yeah. want to clarify. Just want to make sure I uh, I cross the T's and dot the old I's. I don't want to put misinformation out there, Colby. I don't want to... I don't want to spread any lies or anything like that. But yes. you mentioned don't put, uh, don't put the fake news out there, man. We I don't can't do any, it. We don't need any more impartial, biased reporting, man. These pe these fake journalists. Oh, I'm a journalist, man. You didn't even get a journalism degree. Stop acting like you're a journalist. So, you know, just you know, all I ask is, is be honest and don't listen to the fake news. Okay, now we got that clarified. You mentioned Nate Diaz, and I know that. You don't typically watch these events. You do pay attention to what is happening. The welterweight division was of importance with that fight between Nate Diaz and Leon Edwards. So I guess, did you watch the event? Did you watch that fight? Uh, you know, I definitely wouldn't. I definitely didn't watch that fight, and that fight was definitely not of importance to this division. You got a guy who's a lightweight, you know, Stockton Soy Boy, Nate Diaz. You know, he's, I don't even know if he's ever won a fight at welterweight. And, and if he has, he's definitely has a losing record at this weight class. He's, I don't know the last time he won a fight in general, five years ago. So it's on par and on course for the fights that Edward Scissorhands gets. And he wants to fight another guy that's irrelevant. And, and, you know, I didn't see the fight. I was out supporting my teammates, Mike. You know, I was at Premier Fight League, the, am the best amateur world MMA show in the world, watching a good training partner of mine, Richard Mayo, go out there and win the title. And all my training partners at Colby Covington Incorporated and MMA Masters putting on a good show. So I didn't have time to see that preliminary fight at 170. You know, I only watch headliners and title fights. I don't got time for amateur hour. The way I looked at this fight heading in, and some people don't think it's all that fair because of the streak that he's been on. I went into this one thinking, unless Leon Edwards knocks Nate Diaz out in the first minute of the fight, I just didn't see a world where Leon was going to jump the queue and get a title shot before you, especially with the way Dana has been hyping the rematch up. I assume you were not losing much sleep heading into Saturday. You know, I don't ever lose sleep no matter what. So any direction that the world takes it, you know, I, I'm just happy to be here, man. I'm very thankful, Mike. I'm very blessed. You know, I come from, you know, a very poor town in Oregon and, and, you know, the upbringing that I was raised on, you know, my parents, you know, were struggling to make 20,000 a year for, for the whole family, you know, five people. So, you know, I'm just thankful, man. I've made myself into a multi-million dollar business and, you know, my life's going to be great no matter which way we go. But at the end of the day, I'm a blue collar, hardworking American. I'm going to keep putting in the work, Mike. I work hard every single day. It doesn't matter what someone tells me. It doesn't matter what type of direction they want to go with their business. I'm just going to stay ready and keep preparing and, and, and having that, you know, hard to kill mentality that the military has instilled in me. 
So you feel like there's zero chance Leon gets the next shot before you do. Yeah, I think it's pretty obvious. You know, Dana has quadrupled down 10 times down on it. You know, this is the fight, you know, that everybody wants to see. Leon already, Edward Scissorhands already fought, you know, Marty Juice, man. And, and it, was, it wasn't even competitive. He lost every single round. You know, I beat Marty two, three rounds out of that five-round fight. And, you know, I probably was going on to beat him if, if, you know, Mark Goddard didn't save his life and give him a couple of life rafts, stop the fight when I kicked him in the liver, give him a nut shot. And then obviously the early stoppage, I stood up right away and protested, you know. So this, this needs to be run back. There's no other fight. You know, I came back, I beat a former champion. My last four fights of wins are all former UFC champions. So no one has the resume that I have in this sport. No one's done the, the things that I've done in this sport, the history I've created, the moments I've created. So, you know, Marty can keep, you know, pretending that he's some god, but – you know, I'm going to bring him back down to earth really soon. Is it fair? Like, would you say it's at least fair to say that Leon Edwards next fight should be for the title? Like not your shot, not the next shot, but maybe the winner between you and Usman. Like, has he, has he, has he earned that spot? Or, or do you think he, he still has to win another fight? Maybe two. Yeah, he definitely needs to come back. He's what's he on a one fight win streak now? I mean, his last fight, he should have been DQ'd. Edward Scissorhands poked the guy in the eye like two or three times, and he was warned in the back by Herb Dean, hey, don't poke in the eyes, keep your hands closed when, when you're throwing punches and blah, blah, blah. He didn't listen to instructions, and he broke the rules twice. So, you know, his, his winning streak's broken up. He needs to come back and be somebody relevant, somebody in the top five. You know, come beat somebody relevant in the division, and then you can get a title shot. Besides that, stop crying. You're a mumbling, fumbling idiot. No one wants to hear you talk. Your 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 accent is a joke, and your fighting is even worse. Is there a part of you that understands his frustration, though? Because once upon a time, you were a guy winning fights. You were a guy having a hard time finding fights. You wanted a title shot. Many people felt you deserved this title shot, and people would argue that you deserved a shot well before you got the fight with RDA. Can you at least understand and somewhat appreciate where Leon is coming from? I cannot, Mike. You know, I give credit where credit's due, and I can understand scenarios and situations, and, and his scenario and situation is different because he's the one that backed out of the Woodley fight originally. And then, you know what? There was people fighting during the whole pandemic during COVID. He didn't want to fight. He was turning down every single fight that got offered to him, didn't want to fight anybody, backing out, turning down fights. Everybody. Meanwhile, everybody in Europe is going around flying, fighting, you know, during COVID, doing their thing, you know, and he's just sitting on the sidelines just trying to wait and pick and choose his fights. So, you know, he did it to himself. The UFC knows that he turned down a lot of fights and he wasn't ready to fight. You know, I've stayed ready. I've prepared myself. I've kept myself ready at, for short notice at all times. You know, the last couple fights, I, I was ready to fight on a day's notice, on a week's notice. I told the UFC, and, and they saw my willingness and, and readiness to be able to fight on such short notice. So that's why I'm getting rewarded because, you know, I put in the work and, and I've stayed ready, and, and I've always been ready to help the UFC if they needed me. So another piece to this puzzle seems to be Stephen Thompson because he's on a nice run right now. He's getting ready to fight Gilbert Burns, who fought for the title in his last fight. He is a fresh matchup for Usman. He seems interested in a Wonder Boy fight at some point. How do you like Wonder Boy's chances against Gilbert on July 10th? Well, the thing is, you know, the karate kid, which is a joke, he's still calling himself a kid, Mike. I mean, the guy's a 40-year-old virgin. He drives kids around in a karate van. He wants to call himself a boy. You know, you're, you're a grown-ass man. You're almost a grandfather now. You, we see the gray hairs coming out on the side of your head. So, you know, he, if anything, that guy needs to stop complaining, man. He had, what, two or three title shots? He's had more title shots than anybody in this division. He got destroyed by Woodley, got dropped, bloody. Man, the guy's a bum. I don't know why he's trying to talk like he deserves a title shot. You just got knocked out by Anthony Pettis like a year or two ago, a lightweight, a guy that's not even signed by the UFC anymore. You're on a two-fight winning streak. Your last fight, you were beating a, a busboy for Outback Steakhouse. Think about that for a second. The guy is a joke. Yeah, his karate, I mean, he thinks he's cool with his karate. He's not a well-rounded fighter, and, you know, he's, he doesn't deserve anything, Mike. He's already had his title shots, two or three. You know, he's had more title shots than anybody in this division, so he doesn't deserve anything. You know, honestly, he should probably just retire. He's going to get the, hurt. You think he's, he's going to get hurt? hurt? He's going to get hurt, Mike, for sure. He's going to come back for a paycheck, and these guys don't know when to leave, Mike. You got to know when it's your time to hang it up. Your time's passed, buddy. You're going to get really hurt if you want to stay in this. And, you know, but some guys, you know, they're willing to take a paycheck, you know, to, to ruin their health. 
Of course, the main event of that card on July 10th, your former teammate, Dustin Poirier, will look to put a bow on that trilogy with Connor. I know there's no love loss between you and Dustin these days, but I guess putting your uh, your just analyst hat on for a moment, if you will, do you see Dustin getting it done again, or do you think Connor makes the appropriate adjustments in, in a six-month stretch? You know, I don't know what's faker, Dustin's personality or his wife, Joe Lee's fake gimmicks for tits. So Dustin is a complete joke, Mike. I mean, I have video footage that I'm gonna release to the fans very soon to show what type of person Dustin truly is. Everybody uh, hypes him up to be some charitable guy, some nice guy on camera, some nice guy offside camera. Oh, he's a family man, oh, he has a kid. Yeah, his kid and his wife are props. He's a fake piece of shit. The guy is a dirtbag. I have a video of him knocking out an amateur in the gym and he's celebrating, dancing around, yelling in the guy's face, and new, woo, Dustin, who are you trying to impress? Dude, it's a close practice. You're knocking out a guy that came to help you, and it's an amateur. You knock this kid out, give him a concussion, leave him you know, senseless, his head shaking. You're yelling in his face? Like, what? What does that mean, dude? You're not a UFC world champion. You're training for Khabib. This isn't Khabib. You didn't just win the world championship. You're in a close practice, you know, beating a guy that's a humble amateur that came to help you out for your training camp. And you're not going to concuss this guy and you're screaming his face and new and woo. Like, dude, you're not even checking on him to see how he is. I mean, dude, the guy is just, he's not what he, everybody says he is. He's not a charitable guy. He uses his, his, uh, his charity as a tax write-off, Mike. That's nothing more than a tax write-off. And, you know, he, he's just, he's not a good person. So I can't wait to expose him to the whole world because, you know, I trained with him for a couple of years at our old gym. So I know the type of person he is day in and day out. And you know, I'm gonna expose him soon. Do you think he beats Connor again? Uh, yeah, he'll probably beat Connor again, but, but, you know, I mean, what is that saying? You know, beating a guy that, is has no motivation left in the sport, you know, and I, and I'm, I love Connor. I think he's a great, he had a great career, great fighter. He's done great things in the sport, but man, your time's up too, man. Like you're not hungry anymore. It's obvious that you don't train every day and you're not working on your craft. It's obvious. You're just working, you know, to, for other business deals and, and aligning your pockets and padding your bank accounts. So it's just not the same hungry Connor from a couple years ago. It's, it's a different Connor that's, you know, towards the end of his journey. And, and, uh, you know, it's it's not saying much to beat him anymore. I, I, I want to talk about one more past teammate and then a couple of your current teammates before we wrap this up. But I'm sure you've talked about this already. Tyron Woodley, no longer with the UFC. He is venturing into the world of pro boxing. He's getting set to, to fight Jake Paul on August 28th. I know off the top of my head, you have done interviews and you said something to the extent of he needs money. He's going to take a dive. Why do you feel that way? Like, do you really think that he would take a fall when there's so much at stake for him? So much at stake. You know, the only thing that's at stake for Woodley is paying his alimony, paying all his ex-wives and putting food on the table for his like four or five kids that he has. So, you know, he's got multiple kids with different, different women. So he's, he's got a lot of mouth to feed Mike. And there's no doubt that, you know, I took all the shame and all the dignity that everything Woodley has, you know, he, he already faced his biggest fear, you know, me and, and all the verbal harassment that I gave him. And then the physical harassment that I gave him inside the cage and, and breaking his will. And he died inside the octagon when he fought me, that was the last of Tyrone Woodley. That was the ending of his great career. You know, uh, a former champion that did a lot of good things in this sport, but he's done, man. He's washed up and there's no doubt he's going out there to take a dive, Mike. I can promise you that. He has no dignity. There's no shame left in him after I was done with him. So, you know, if anything, you know, that little Lizzie McGuire, Hollywood little star, Snake Paul needs to call me and ask for permission, you know, because I am uh, Tyrone Woodley's legal guardian. So have your little slime bag people from Hollywood call me Snake Paul, and I'll sign off on my son Tyrone Woodley fighting you. Let's just let's just say for the sake of argument that he is approaching this fight. He is taking it seriously. Everything's on the up and up. He's going in, trains hard. Jake's goes in, he trains hard. Do you see a way Tyron wins? Do you see a way Jake wins? Like, is there a part of you being an MMA guy that even though you don't like the man, that you'll be rooting for Tyron to beat Jake Paul? Do you even care? I don't even care, man. It's it's such a circus sideshow, Mike. It, it, it's not real fighting, man. It's a fake fight. It's a fake fighting. These are all 
people that are taking dives. Did you not see the last show that they had? I mean, they're having Justin Bieber perform at halftime for like an hour and a half during intermission. I mean, they're just... It's a complete joke, man. They got they got this little YouTube fighter who's not a real fighter. Jake Paul's a, a complete joke. I've had amateurs at my gym, Colby Covington Incorporated, MMA Masters, that have went out to help Jake Paul with, with uh, sparring and training in Miami. And they came back and they all said the same thing. He sucks. He's no good. The kid's not a real fighter. They're just covering up that, you know, he's a big draw because he's got, you know, all this Disney following and this little YouTube uh, kids that all follow him and stuff. So... You know, he's not a real fighter. If Woodley really showed up, you know, and, and took it serious, he'd, he'd knock him out. But he's not going to take him serious. He's going to get paid a couple extra million to take the dive. And I think that's pretty apparent. When they had their face off, you know, Jake was yelling stuff. Oh, why don't you put your purse down then? Put your purse on it. And, and Woodley's like, nah, he didn't want to risk his purse because, you know, he knows he's going out there to take a dive. And, and he doesn't want to risk those couple million dollars that he's getting. You mentioned MMA Masters. I want to talk about one of the up-and-coming welterweights at MMA Masters. Miguel Baeza just went through one of the most exciting fights of the year thus far. Suffered a, a tough loss to Santiago Ponzinibbio. How has he responded to that loss? What kind of potential do you see from him moving forward? Because he looks like a stud to pretty much everybody. Yeah, Miguel is, is a stud, man. He, he, he works extremely hard. He's uh, dedicated to the martial arts and improving his game every single day. So, you know, his ceiling is very high, Mike. I see a bright, bright future for Miguel. You know, he's going to put on a ton of exciting fights. He's always going to be in those fight of the night type fights, and he's going to get a lot of performance bonuses because that's just the way he fights. He's explosive. You know, he's, he's a great fighter, and, and he's only going to learn from that fight. That was his first real experience of a test of a fight, of a real fight and a, a high level top uh, world-class fight. So, you know, he's only going to learn from, him. he's going to come back better. He realizes the mistakes that he made. And honestly, I, I just see a uh, unbelievable ceiling for Miguel Beza and accomplishing great things in the sport of MMA. Another teammate of yours will be fighting on July 10th. Nico Price is fighting Michelle freaking Pajera. That fight is absolutely insane. <laughs> what is the <laughs> Nico kind of looking at that fight? Because that is just a wild fight that everybody just got super enthused about when they heard about it. Yeah, man, that's going to be a great fight. Nico is just one of the most exciting fighters on the whole entire roster. So, I, you know, he just he wants he just wants to come in and put on a show for the fans, and that's what he's going to do, man. He's going to go out there and he's going to knock this guy out, or or he's just going to make it the most exciting fight, knock down, drug, drag out, bloody fight that you've ever seen. So, you know, I'm excited for that fight, man. I love watching Nico. He's always must see TV every time he steps inside the UFC octagon. So, it'll be great. It'll, you know, tune in, man. Don't miss it, fans. Yeah, he's got such energy, too. He's such a unique and fascinating individual. That fight is going to be bonkers. But uh, before I let you go, man, it, appear, it appears we are embarking on this adventure back to Kamar Usman, back to a welterweight title shot. What is the message for Kamar Usman right now? You're ready to go. You said you'll fight him tomorrow. What is the message for the champion right now? Yeah, the message is, man, stop hiding in, in your so-called home country of Africa. We know you only went back there because it's the first time you've ever been back to Africa because we all know, Marty, that you were born in Dallas and you went to college in Nebraska. So stop hiding in Africa from me. Get back to America. Let's get this deal done. Man, you look desperate. I know you're squirming right now. You're scared to fight me again. Let's get this done. Let's find out who the best welterweight in the planet is. And and uh, does he have his shots to get to to Africa, and I'm not talking about those shots that his chemist gives him in his butt, you know, with steroids. I'm talking about that sh the shots for like malaria and shit. I I don't know. I'm I'm not his doctor. I don't know. And he might want to get that checked up, man. It would be a terrible thing if uh, you know he came back with malaria or spread some diseases in Africa. I'd feel terrible for for them, you know. And that's the last thing they need. So hopefully he's being smart and safe over there, and uh, you know he gets back to America in one piece. You know, and let's get this done, man. It's going to be the biggest fight of the year. You know, two of the best fighters in the world. You know, two of the greatest pound-for-pound -pound fighters. And, you know, we're going to end this thing once and for all. We got unfinished business, man. There's no more, you know, Mark not so Notsogata that's going to save you inside that octagon. We're going to fight, man. It's going to be a real fight. No cheating. No, no fake breaks. No fake timeouts. No fake stoppages. Just the greatest fighter in the world being settled that night. We will leave it at that, Colby. I appreciate the time as always. Looking forward to this fight when it does get made official. And uh, can't thank you enough, man. Thank you for the time as always, sir. I appreciate it, Mike. Have a great night. You know, tell the family hi, and we'll catch up again in the near future. I will. We got a new member of the family. Got a got a dog. Got a little got a little doggy running around. <laughs> I'm surprised he didn't run down and 
try to bark and interrupt me during this interview like my kid usually does, but there you go. <laughs> thanks, <It> was <laughs> welcome. <laughs> All right. Thanks, thanks, dude. Take care.